What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at a turn-based RPG open world exploration type game called Of Blades and Tales. The game is currently available on itch.io if you wanted to check out the demo of the game and see if it's something that you would get into. On top of that, it does have a Steam released planned, so I'll try to have both those links down below. But if I forget, I'm sure someone in the comments will help you out with that, or the old Google fool will take care of it. It's just my old brain bean doesn't work like it used to. It's just not as snappy and zippy as it once was. We're going to dive on in, spend about 25 to 35 minutes with the game, and see if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list or otherwise pass on. If after watching this, you did indeed want to get the game for yourself, that's all down below. Like I said, you can also take a look at my Discord and my Twitch stream just in case you wanted to swing on through and be social. I know, ew, gross. Who wants to deal with social interaction? But the option is absolutely there, just in case it strikes your fancy. Let's go ahead and start a new game because we've got limited time and a lot to get done. Once upon a time, mankind lived on Earth. One day they disappeared without a trace and soon after the world began to change as well. Magic was born. It gave us the gift of speech and the use of our hands. We are magical beings, but will we make the same mistakes that man did, or are we a better heir to them? Almost there. I just need to follow this path, and I should be back at the village before night gets here. I'm wondering if Aro is already back from his expedition. Haven't heard anything from him in days. Okay, let's not waste time. Let's just hope that there are no more dangers lurking around here. Alright, I don't appear to have any weapon or anything. The movement seems to be more or less identical to Stone Shard. You just kind of click and move around, but it is actually very, very fluid. And actually, I like the saturation of the pixel art. The colors look very, very good. What do we have over here? A medicinal herb. I probably shouldn't miss out on that. Yep, that's exactly the kind of thing that you should always carry with you. It's not as good as a potion, but it'll help you recover quickly after a fight. I'm going to pocket it and use it when I need it. Okay, so we got some medicinal herbs right there. Are there any further medicinal herbs in the air? Oh, God, what is that thing? Dude, that is a bug the size of a cow. I'm not trying to fight that thing. Ow, it bit me. Stop it. Stop it right now. Well, apparently, at least on some bare minimum level. Ooh, a sword of endurance. Nice, dude. Deals plus 100% damage. All right, I got myself a sword now. Yeah, anybody else want the smoke? We can do this thing. I'm armed. I'm dangerous. I'm ready. I'm herbed out. Ooh, there's a treasure down here, too. Ooh, a health potion. Sweet. All right, so it seems like the game does actively reward you for, like, looking around. Like, I don't even think we're supposed to be hanging out over here. We were just supposed to go to town. But it seems to me as though if you take a look around, there are things squirreled away. Ooh, another medicinal herb. Hold on. We got to get our hands on this. All right, medicinal herb. Let's see how good it is. So it looks like it restores 20% of our max health over a couple of turns. Oh, nice, but it auto-bypasses the turns right there. Okay. I want to see if I can fight this guy. There we go. I got the sneak attacks on. You know, I don't feel like the sword is doing that much better damage than just like my fist did. Okay, we don't have any abilities or anything, so I guess we'll just carry on to the village. I think we got most of the loot from around here. And it looks like it's possible that the road died on us. Yeah, it's just kind of like a murky area of trail. Let's have a look around. Anything good in the vicinity? Or am I just going to get myself into more trouble that I can't handle? I mean, we've already gotten like a third of a level, so we might as well get like a little bit of action going on. I don't see anything. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of trace the outskirts in the periphery of the map. 
And we'll try to gather up everything we possibly can for the future because it does seem to me like combat is aggressive. Like, maybe we're going to pick up some equipment later on. Like, it looks like we can actually equip things on our various body slots. So, like, maybe we'll get some kind of, like, functional leather armor or something at some point. But for right now, we feel kind of squishy. Oh, the village is right here. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to go check this out. Oh, God, time passes, huh? Do I have a clock or anything like that that tells me what time of the day it is? I would really, really like to have, like, a sun wheel or, like, a sundial or something like that so you can actually see how fast the passage of time is taking place. It's not, like, a huge priority for right now, but, like, that would be something that's appreciated. And they've actually done a pretty good job at keeping the UI minimalist. And so they've got plenty of screen real estate left to populate with other things. I saw a flower over there, but I guess that's not my deal. It would be cool if you could pick up the stones and, like, throw them in a fight and stuff, too. Ever since I played Alina of the Arena, I sort of like it when games have environmental objects that have, like, one-time uses where you can grab a rock and chuck it at somebody when you're far out. Or you can, you know, use this, that, or the other in interesting ways. Okay, a healing herb right there. I'll take it. I'll take it. Can I zone out in any direction? No. It looks like you can only zone out, like, in established directions or, like, localities. All right. Ooh, and they've got God Rays popping on in right here. The pixel art is actually fairly impressive. Like, the main character himself and, like, the portrait art is a little bit minimalist. Like, it's very pixely. But, like, the general presentation of the game is pretty spectacular. It looks pretty good, actually. Like, it's a game that you kind of drink in with your eyes. Good. All right, well, we'll go back into town then. What's right here? So we've got an agile axe. We've got a buckler. And we've got an agile tunic. Okay, I should probably figure out what all this means, but it looks like it auto-equipped most of it, so that gives us physical resistance. And what is this right here? Oh, that is a map. Very cool. And you can move while the map is open. Okay. I'd still like to have, like, a local mini-map or whatever. Taking a look at our character, it looks like we have perks. We have different stats over here, so strength is physical damage and resistance. Intellect is magical damage and resistance. Dexterity is dodge chance and physical damage a little bit. It looks like Perception is Critical Hit Chance. It looks like we've got Willpower acting as our max stamina pool. And, to a lesser extent, our Physical Resistance and our Vitality is mostly our max health. I really like the cobble work on the sides of these buildings, too. Ah, you're back. Good. Come here. We need to talk. I take it you haven't heard from Aro either. I'm starting to get a little bit worried. It's not like him to go this long without reporting in. As far as I know, he was going to explore a new crawler lair to the east. Basically nothing a seasoned fighter can't handle. Riff, I wouldn't ask if I wasn't getting a bad feeling, but you're his best student. Can you go see what's going on? Don't take any risks, though. One more thing. Meditate by the bonfire on the things that Aro taught you beforehand in preparation for any dangers you might encounter. Okay. Ha uh ha. -huh. Resting by the bonfire allows you to adjust your abilities for your upcoming adventures. Additionally, you can set it as a retreat. Okay. So, should you fall in battle or your journey be interrupted, you will magically return here. Nice. Okay. Let's meditate and learn. Oh, it gave me a free level up. Sweet. Okay, so we can get a rushing blow. You charge towards the target, stun for a turn, and deal 115% damage. All right. Shields. We've got... Increases physical resistance from your armor by 100% for three turns. Let us tank a little bit harder. Okay. Survival. We can put down a trap. It deals 50% damage and then stuns for two turns. Yeah, let's do that. Let's get that right there. I like the idea of having like a trap or something that I can mess around with. And it looks like the rest of it hasn't been implemented yet, but you know. Oh, we've got two points to play around with. Okay. Well, let's be a little bit more tankier then. Can I drag these around? I can. Beautiful. You love to see it. All right. What's this guy got going on? Can I get any gear upgrades? All right. So he's got a cap. That gives us a little bit more resistance. We don't really have any money. But for the time being, it looks like we can unload that. It wouldn't give us enough money to get into the stuff that we want to get into. So I'm just going to hold on to it for a minute. But let's head out. What is this crate? Oh, the crate is actually interactable. Okay. I saw the crate and I just didn't know if I was going to be able to do anything with it. Throwing caltrips. When an enemy enters, it stuns for a turn and deals a little bit of damage. Okay. Can I put that on my hotbar too? Yeah. No? Oh, I guess not. Okay. Oh, we've also got skill points that we can put in. All right. Well, let's just go for some strength then. Another crate over here. Let's go bust this guy up. Yeah, dude. I am the destroyer of crates. 
he that makes cubes quiver with his coming. Uh, do you have anything? What are you, like a potion vendor? You got a sweet hoodie. I'm a little bit jealous of it. 400 bucks for for a potion. Okay, I don't think I'm going to be able to afford that as of right now. However, we have a clear goal and direction that we're supposed to be flowing out into, so flow I shall. Uh, let's head out to the east, I guess, since that's what it sounded like it wanted me to do. We've got enough medicinal herbs that I don't feel particularly too worried about our safety. Like, 20% health is pretty solid. And so, like, I feel like we can probably heal up. Just in case the fights are a little bit nastier than what we expected them to be. Oh, there's another buggy boy over here. Strength appears to scale fairly well. We only added one point. It feels like we're hitting a lot harder. So that's good. We only lost like one HP right there. So long as I've got my shield ability, I think we might be able to tank through it all. Oh, so he gets like almost like a double turn. So he gets like a move and an attack. Okay. Good to know. You can also go up right here. As far as the map is concerned. Okay, so it's split out into kind of like grids. Gotcha. So we're in moderate threat territory. And there's that cave they wanted me to go to. I'm going to try to fight everything on the way. The XP seems like it'll be helpful. Actually, I don't know if the defense actually helped. Like, I don't know if the physical resistance we have actually reduces the damage by the flat amount as denoted on the item. There may be a mechanic here that is a bit more intricate. I haven't used my trap once yet either. Let's take a look. Maybe it'll have it tool-tipped. So dodge chance is 9%. Physical resistance is 5%. But it doesn't tell us like a formula or anything else. Now would probably be a good time to use a medicinal herb. So there we go. No sound effect on the medicinal herb, but this project is early enough along that like I'm not that concerned about it. I'm gonna put a trap. Oh, he went around it. The bug is a genius. He's a god. He's a tactical machine. It looks like the trap stays. Oh, it disappeared. Okay. So the trap's there for like six or seven turns. I could put down a trap. Let's see if we can run him into it. Nice. Okay, so the trap is like kind of a nice little supplementary thing to have. He's probably going to come in right there. Hey, very nice. Zero damage taken. There we go. Okay, they seem to be pretty weak to the traps. Hey, nice little dodge right there, too. What do we have? A tunic? Okay, okay. We can always go back to town and resupply if we need to do so. I'm a bit of an explorer. That's kind of like my Skinner box type. And so I really, really enjoy kind of like looking around and finding things. And so I'm going to try to pan and scan through the level and see if there's anything we missed. Very nice. I think the traps are going to carry us on through this situation. I don't think we're going to struggle too much. I don't see anything else around, so let's just continue chugging on out to the east and seeing if there's anything, like, good out that way. It is nice that the game's got kind of like a rapid-fire Tales of Majayal loot system where, like, bugs and animals and things can actually drop loot for you. It's very hack-and-slashy, but then at the same time, like, you do take enough damage to where you need to, like, think about your movements and, like, how you want to play the game. Just straight up running up on enemies and swinging away is not going to function. But we've got the power of traps on our side, so we'll be okay. Another healing herb right there. That's a good find. I think we're solid. Looks okay to me. Another little buggy boy over here. Yup, let's light this candle. Down he goes, and we've got an agile axe right here. Physical damage plus two. So what is ours doing? Ours is doing plus two. Okay, good to know. I'm going to pop off another herb real fast because we've got another replenishment right there. Honestly, we're kind of like swimming in healing items. I do think it's a good idea, though, with the amount of damage you can potentially take just in like one simple fight to take the time to find some of these extra restoratives because if you don't, I think you're going to get caught with your pants around your ankles. 
I have no patience for you, sir. And I will not stop my journey in order to deal with you. Kind of wonder if those little bugs are like huntable or something if you have a bow. From the way that they run away, I'm kind of guessing maybe they drop like supplement. Oh, he didn't do what I thought he was going to do. Can't step on my own trap. I figured I'd try it right there real fast. That works. And actually, I think we can kite this guy until our trap comes back up. There we go. We found the cheese. The maximum strength queso. We have isolated it. Something of a talent of mine, finding things that are broken in RPGs. One shot at him. That guy got away, though. Ah. I was trying to kill the little bugs that were kind of like tootling around just to see if they drop anything good. What's up, Brooder? Oh my, wandered right into him. Okay, and we got a decent amount of XP going though, so I'm not against it. I do think that optimizing our damage is probably the like the best place we can start. Then again, when healing items scale via percentages, I feel like that does, in a lot of cases, make HP a lot more appealing as well. I guess it'll kind of depend if there's any abilities that really, really scale well with like your HP pool or like your stamina pool. I don't see any more lootables around. I do like that the enemies actually step on twigs and like crunch twigs and stuff and then it gives you like a little sound notification to know where they're at. And that does have directional audio hard-coded hard into it so that you can actually derive that information, which is a nice little detail. Like when I hear something down to the south of me, it sounds like it's to the south of me. When it's over to the east of me or the west of me, it sounds like it's in that direction. Combat music's on. Is there something over here? I think it's just that little bug right there. I don't think he's going to be anything that's like a real threat. Let's medicinal herb it up real fast. Get that HP looking a little bit better. I'm going to kind of guess. Oh, this guy's tough. Yeah, he's got a chin on him. He dropped the convincing staff. He has plus three damage. Gives us a little bit of willpower, too. We'll lose some defense, but we're getting plus one damage. I'll try it out. Looks like we can have separate, or separate item sets, too, so like we can kind of take both. There's no reason for us to abandon one over the other. I don't know what the hotkey is for quickly swapping your sets. No clue there, but seems all right. Uh, go ahead and give me another strength right there. I want to hit hard. Oh, that's actually dealing less damage. Let me take a look. So if that's dealing less damage, it's probably due to a stat discrepancy. Yeah, it looks like staves. Well, it's kind of hard to say. It says it affects talents. So maybe it affects the things that are listed underneath right there. Like the stuff like the deal 75% damage. Chance of bringing the target off balance, reducing their damage. Probably stick with the sword and board for right now since it does seem like a damage loss. I'm gonna say he's gonna step into alignment here. Nine damage crit. I'll take it. Okay, fights are getting a little bit aggressive and nastier. We do have a bow right there though, which actually is a really good idea. Oh, if you hold down out, you can actually use it as a look around mode. Okay, cool. I would like to know how to swap my weapon set, though. R is how I do it. R, like a pirate. All right, so we'll put that over there, and we'll start out with the bow, and then we'll finish him off with the sword if need be. I don't know if it's like a free action. It is not a free action, so we'll have to take that into account. Okay, they're now down. Let's go ahead and healing herb up. Can I put healing herb on one of these? Doesn't look like I can. All right, we'll use a restorative real fast just to get us back in the game. One shot at him, very nice. Oh, there are many of you, huh? Looks like I can attack the hive. Okay, I mean, XP's XP. 
few more healing herbs over here. One more healing herb. Okay. Yeah, it gives me a free turn right there to swap my weapon out. A convincing chest armor. How does that vary from what we have? We have a dexterous armor? Okay. Since I'm using the bow, I'm going to keep it on the dexterous for right now. Is there anything up this way in this little pass? I don't see anything, but that don't mean there's something not here. Oh, there's the enemies. Traps down. Fire an arrow. Fire an arrow. Swapping weapons does indeed give them a free turn. Alright, a little, a little scuffed right now. Probably need to take this hive out before things get any wilder. We'll medicine herb up real fast, maybe twice. There we go. Alright, take this thing out. This thing is actually like a high priority target. I do like the sh the shake and wobble effect it gives you when you uh, get a critical hit right there. I also like that if the thing on the ground is money, when you walk over it, it fires coins everywhere and kind of like a satisfying splash instead of just walking up to the bag and looting it when it's like an item or something. Oh, it looks like I can actually point blank people with traps too. Not a terrible thing to be aware of. Probably shouldn't be a thing for balancing reasons. Like, you should probably put down traps preemptively. He's going to step right here, I was going to say. Every single time they've tried to line up with me along, like, a cardinal angle. Ooh, free health potion. One down. Um, I'm going to put down a trap. That was actually fairly flawless. That worked out great. I'm pretty happy with that. Oh, you can't use two abilities in one turn. Gotcha. Okay. And more right there, but our stamina is looking kind of busted. Looks like it comes back all by its lonesome, though. But I do like that they've got like these little nooks back here that are actually like lootable and full of things and XP and item drops. That's really nice. Well, so far, not a whole lot else around, but it says the cave that we're looking for is actually on this tile. So I guess we'll just keep looking around until we find it. Oh, we've actually got a... We've got, like, a objective flag. I didn't even notice it. Okay, so this is a new spot. Let's go ahead and meditate and learn, because I think we do have a skill point ready to rock. Our next one is a deafening slam. Deals 20% damage, stuns for three turns, but any damage will stop this effect. So it's crowd control. That's all I needed to know. So we can sprint. That gives us double actions for what looks like three turns. That's pretty, pretty snappy too, actually. Uh, I'm going to go for the CC though. We'll get the shield bash. All right. Yeah, we can set this as a place of retreat just in case we die. All right, let's go down into the dungeon. Yep, I, I had a sneaking suspicion that's how that was going to go. Oh, they're hatching. Oh, there's a spoder. Okay, all right, all right, all right. You're the big man. You're the big man. Bug meat. Tasty. Eh. I gotta remember that they always go for cardinal directions when they attack you. That just seems to be like a universal rule that the AI is following, is that they always try to approach you from like an increment of 90 degree angles. Alright, give me a medicinal herb. Give me another one. It does feel tactical, though. Like, you absolutely do have to use your abilities. If you don't, you're going to have a bad time. Oh, you can only fire a bow with stamina. Oh, 
Oh, there's a hive up there, too. I didn't even see that. Agile Axe. Okay. Let me get a little medicine in me. You see my damage there because of the fog of war. Money, bug meat, a little bit more money. All right, let's get these hives all taken care of. We've got too many enemies spawning around here, and it's making this into a headache. Oh, boy. We're still good. We're still hanging in there. A little bit more cash. Like the sound effect for the cash pickup. Sounds nice and good and clinky. I do think the attack sounds could be dialed up a little bit and be a little bit punchier. Or at least increased in loudness. But then again, we've got the split over here and everything's already on max. But I, I do think that the, the attacks and you getting hit could be a little punchier. I don't think we can do anything with those trees and stuff right there. I think we're still looking for what's his name, too. I'm going to put down a trap, I guess. Uh -huh. Oh, nice. We got level four. All right. So there's another bow right there. Not particularly better or worse than what we already have. I'm going to try to kill off some of these bug hives over here. Those things have some serious movement to them. That actually, I didn't even realize it was an AoE cone. So that's even better. It stuns three things in front of you for three turns. That's a really powerful ability for getting yourself out of trouble like we just did. All right, let's take this hive out real fast. I'd prefer for this whole cave to be safe by the time we get out of here. Another health potion. Okay. All right. All right. Any treasure chests or anything around? Don't see much. And without a mini map, I've got to kind of do this. Ow, what is that thing? Nope, don't like that. Oh, you can get me. Ow! Okay, you be stunned for a minute. I'm going to drink a health potion. Oh, he's a tough guy, huh? Yeah, my man wants the drama. Okay, give me a little bit more defense. Oh, we're redlining. Hey, we got him. So we got a wary axe, a convincing sword. That's a plus three damage sword. An orb of retreat. This will take you back to your campfire. Okay, good to know, good to know, good to have. All right, medicinal herb it up. We're probably going to need about two of those. Like, we got we to gotta sleep this wound off. A little bit more bug meat. What does the bug meat actually do? Restores 50% of your max stamina. Oh, nice. So it's like a stamina restorative. Okay, I figured I'd use it for crafting or something because, you know, indie games being what they are, items are typically used for crafting. You can't have a game without crafting in it. What kind of nerd in the year of our Lord 2021 is making a game that doesn't have crafting in it? You know what I mean? It's basically anathema to have a game where you don't have crafting. Oh. Hey, bud. A little bit more monies. Hey, there's my man. Arrow is lying on the floor, visibly dejected and injured. When he sees you, he smiles. Riff, it's good to see you. Don't worry, I've had worse. Listen, you must quickly return to the tribe and warn the others. Something in the lair isn't natural. At least one of those beasts down here seems to be magical. Riff, I fought a rat witcher once who had less skill than this insect. I don't have an explanation yet either, but it's important to warn others. Talk to Tana. She'll know what to do. Are you coming? I will, but you'll be faster without me. Now that you've cleared the way to the exit, I'll follow you out. We'll meet up later in the village. Okay. 
Um, I'd like to sweep the rest of the cavern for more sweet-ass XP and sweet loot. Just saying. I actually think this is one of those cases where I've been really thorough, and I actually found everything that was down inside the dungeon. So we'll just bounce on out. I am going to meditate over here, though. I'm going to meditate for a minute. Meditate. What does that do? Increase or decrease your received damage by 5% for talent shields. Okay. I do like the idea of getting double turns, but stamina does seem to be a hard limiter for us right now. You know what? Let's stay on the path. I see no reason to divert. We're going tanky. We're going real, real tanky. Uh, this game's called Blades and Tails. I hope you guys liked it thus far. Very interesting little title. If this, I mean, this is a really well put together alpha demo proof of concept. It really sincerely is. So I'm actually kind of excited to see where this game's going to be at in like three or four years. Once it's had some serious elbow grease and whatnot put into it. As an observation, I would like to see some kind of change in your character either as you level up or as you hit certain storyline points, or as you put on equipment, the weapons do seem to change. We've got a little shield right now and a little sword, and it changed to a staff when we had that. But I would like to see your character's armor and whatnot change as well. Given the nature of the fact that this is probably a small operation game, though, developed by, like, a couple of people, and they're using sprites, that might be more difficult than me just suggesting it. Like, I'm not unaware of the fact that sometimes there are financial constraints when it comes to working with sprites. And so that may not be an option, but I would recommend having it at certain junctions. Your character, like, starts to look more professional like a warrior and whatnot. Gets a little bit more armor. Just tie it to the narrative if you have to, you know what I mean? But I do always think that, like, a clear sense of progression is a good idea in games like this. A visual sense of progression. Uh, so anyways, other than that, though, between that and I think the sound effects could be a little bit more punchier, a little bit more plosive, a little bit more visceral... Everything else is fantastic. Uh, my name is Splattercat. Thank you for stopping on in. This is a Blades and Tails. I'll see you all tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. But up until then, I'm out of time for the day, so I gotta go. Thank you for hanging out with me and patronizing the channel. And I'll be back later with more for you. Bye, everybody.